I'm now a medical futurist, which is quite a special profession. I've been, I've been working my way to becoming a, a futurist from a doctor because I decided that the best way I could serve a society is not being a medical geneticist, which I am, but to merge my two selves, being a doctor and being a geek. And as there was no profession for that, I designed one. That's the medical futurist. I see. And I know that you've created this online and also in-person course, the social media course, which teaches physicians how to use social media in today's day and age to help with the care of their patients. Can you tell us a little bit more about the courses? Absolutely. I've been a huge fan of the patient movement. And whenever I saw some physicians being defensive about using social media, I thought that how can we expect them to be digitally literate when we don't train them for this? So six years ago, I launched the world's first university course, which is the part of the official curriculum that focuses on using social media platforms from Twitter, Facebook to Wikipedia and YouTube and blogs. And I teach medical students about how to use them in an efficient way. I teach them how to transform Googler patients to e-patients. I teach them how to use emails with patients. So we go through all these skill sets required for using digital channels in medicine and healthcare. And I, I teach students at the course at the real medical school. But for the last one and a half years, I've been creating an e-learning platform, which is for free for everyone. It's called the Social Media Course. It contains 16 presentations, Prezi.com extended presentations with handouts and tests. There is some gamification behind that, so I try to motivate students to finish all the lectures, and at the end they get a certification. And for my surprise, right now about 3,000 physicians and students are doing the lectures all over the world, but more physicians than students. So it, it means that they need, they want to get these skills, they want to acquire such skills in, in doing the care and, and dealing with their own patients, but they need some such skills and they have to acquire these in an online channel. How did you first get the idea to do this and where did you get the information to make the course? It, it comes from my own story. As a medical student back then, I, my childhood dream was to become a geneticist doctor. And when I tried to find genetics-related information or resources online from Facebook to Twitter and YouTube, I, had to, I, I realized it's quite hard. It's almost an art to find any quality resources. So I thought, uh, after some point, everyone will deserve to find quality, dynamically changing resources online in their own specialties or medical conditions in their own languages for free. And that's what, that's what was, that was the point when I launched WebSyn.com, a uh, free service curating these resources in many languages and many, many topics. And after that, based on my own experience, I wanted to help my own students to, to be better at this and to be able to help their own e-patients. Because again, how can we expect these doctors to deal with e-patients if we don't train them for this world full of digital technologies and social media platforms? Therefore, I launched the course, I launched the e-learning platform, and since then I've been building Webicina to be a, a huge database of, of evidence-based uh, information and, and, again, social media resources. And now we have 20 languages covered, from Chinese to Portuguese and Dutch, and 140 medical conditions and, and specialties. It means we have curated over 6,000 medical dynamically changing resources. So we try to help medical professionals and e-patients from many perspectives to be able to get closer to each other. Do you foresee social media becoming kind of a cornerstone in medical education in the future? I believe it's about medical communication, not about social media. I always tell my students there are no physical differences between the offline and online communication. If there are things I would never do in the real world with my patients, why would I ever do that online? There are no, just no real differences. So I tell them the key is to, have, to be good at medical communication. And if now we have to use online channels for this, then we do this in an efficient and an evidence-based format. But this is just about pure communication. When a patient asks about a medical book, they just purchase the book and what about the quality? And doctors have to be able to answer this question. Now they ask about websites or, or medical online social media resources. There are no differences. Regarding the expertise, they have to be able, professionals have to be able to assess the quality of a medical book or a medical Facebook channel. There are no differences between these. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. And I know, for one, I'm definitely going to go home and check out your social media course online. So thank you very much. Thank you.